This is a Verbo Fiesta double. Tostitos, pony up the money, because this needs to be the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. It makes more sense as the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, but it's Verbo right now. Verbo, I think that's, I don't know. I use them. They're great, but they're not sponsoring the show, so that's enough on me. Uh, you take a look at Liberty. They're undefeated right now. They are 13-0, and played nobody, have one of the weakest strength of schedules all year long, playing the Oregon Ducks. Quack, quack, Mr. Ducksworth. Oregon, 10-2 and two on the year, or 11-2, sorry about that. 11-2 on the year. Two losses, both to Washington. Opt-outs for this game is, are very intriguing because, you know, Liberty's got some guys in the transfer portal here, and you take a look at what they got going on. Uh, you take a look at Bonix is playing in this game. Uh, Bucky Irving did opt out. Troy Clifford Franklin, our favorite ride receiver. He is not announced yet. Neither is Tess Johnson. Uh, we're looking at, there's some questionable guys. There's some guys that are in the portal. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Oregon's got a, a interesting road to go, but fresh. I don't know about you. Like what's the path? Maybe that's the better question. Is there a path for a Liberty win in this game? Folks, Boise State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma didn't want to be there. Boise State was a much I think, a stronger football team across the board, a little more talented. Tulane, much more talented football team, took their energy, got after the USC. Liberty played the worst schedule in the country. There are 133 FBS teams. They played the 133rd schedule. They did not play a Power 5 opponent all year. This is their first one, and they're getting to Oregon. Now, remember what a couple of early, I think it's a long time ago, remember September, uh, the hype around Colorado, and they were all this and all that, and they had to go to Eugene. And Dan and Lanning basically got tired of seeing it, and they put it to the buffs. I have a feeling this is going to be the exact same outcome and scenario. It is going to be an absolute bloodbath. There is no path for liberty. The only path is that if, the starting, the first and second strings for Oregon did not play in this ballgame. Um, this is an Oregon team that is trying to build for the future to make a statement about going into the Big Ten, make a statement about preseason rankings for next year to be in the playoffs and sort of position yourself to announce um, that they are one of the top eight teams, top nine teams in the country. This is going to be a beatdown. Um, Dan Lanning worked for Kirby Smart and Nick Saban. They don't take these games lightly. They take these games as a statement and a national appearance and a national audience. And I have a feeling Liberty, you might want to have prayed that the committee ranked you lower than say SMU or someone else who won the you know their conference title and going to take in that spot because you are going to enjoy your trip out there to the desert. And by kickoff, it's going to get ugly really, really quick. Um, and this is going to show a major discrepancy in talent and football development across these both programs. It's great that Liberty's there. Fantastic season. You're undefeated. I do feel bad for Caden Salter, Quentin Cooley, and uh, Daniel's a wide receiver. You're three big playmakers. You're going to have to put on a show. You're going to have to score every time you get the ball. Um, it's going to be a completely different brand of football that you guys haven't played in a while. Or even maybe ever, maybe in high school you've got to play against a team with some solid D1 you know, players, you're playing against a legit loaded squad here in Oregon who in both cases almost beat Washington who's playing for the playoff and two three-point losses. This team, that, that's, that last loss is lingering with them, and I think they're going to take out their pain on you. Um, I feel bad the Liberty got this matchup, but I think anybody, if you had played Penn State, Ole Miss, um, Georgia, Florida State, any one of the other New Year's Six Bowl games probably would be very similar um, setup. You're just – the talent depth is not going to be there, and the size at the line of scrimmage is not going to be there. And Oregon can make this ugly really quick. Um, again, great season for Liberty, but I really, really find a very it's almost impossible uh, for them to have any kind of chance. They might have a lead in the ball game early, but they won't be leading in the second half or in, or in the final score. Fresh, the only – I looked at this for a while. And right now, Oregon is a 17 point favorite over under set 65 and or 66 and 0.5. The only thing I can even think for Liberty 
is Liberty has 21 interceptions on the year. Bo Nix, when he was at Auburn, that last year is at Auburn, he had a tendency to throw interceptions. Bo Nix turns back the clock and turns back into Auburn Bo Nix and not Oregon Bo Nix and throws four picks in this game. If that happens, I, I think that's the that's the path for Liberty. If that you get you have to have short fields. Like you're not gonna go on twelve play eighty yard drives for a touchdown in this game very often. You may get one or two in there, but you gotta put some serious points up. Like this gotta be you gotta be able to score at like almost a video game level to keep up with Oregon, especially in a game like this with Liberty. This just isn't fair. I mean I get it. Liberty un- is undefeated. They're the one group of five team that was undefeated for this season. But Tulane would have been a better matchup. Boise was a, another one. Heck, you know, I was, before they lost in the MAC title game, I was pounding the table for Toledo. I thought Toledo would have been a much better matchup in this one. So I guess give Liberty their opportunity here. The thing I'm watching here fresh, you know, Bo Nix, how does he go out? How does he raise his draft stock? Is you know he's not projected as a first round quarterback. I don't even know if he's a, a second round quarterback here right now. Is he able to kind of show out and put something else on tape that NFL scouts scouts like? Um, if Franklin plays, you know how does he ball out? But really, the name that I'm most intrigued to watch for Oregon is Jordan James. He will be back next year. He's probably gonna. Step into as the lead running back over Bucky as Bucky Irving's not going to be back next year. You get a quarterback like Dylan Gabriel, backup quarter like Dante Moore coming in in the transfer portal. So <coughs> Jordan James is really the the one that we want to see. What does he do for Oregon? But yeah, this is going to get ugly, quick, fast, in a hurry. Uh, I'll say this. Take the over here, folks, because I think Oregon's got a legit shot to hit the over on their own. Oh, so. Give me Liberty or give me death. Is that going to get a whole new meeting at this point? Yeah, Liberty is going to be praying for death in that a running clock there. Hey, at least they get like a nice setup in, in it'd, it'd be a nice Tempe. Bowl. Yeah, nice bowl, especially coming you know, from Virginia, a little colder. You can get a nice little vacation out there in the desert. You know, like you said, Bowl week and the, and the big bowls is a lot of fun. The gifts, the experience, it'll it'll be something cool for them that, that they usually don't get. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the time you have all been waiting for, let's go to the college football playoff. Hey, this is nice because a lot of guys aren't opting out in this football game. Our preview here, folks, is brought to you by Spinnable Sports, so make sure you go on spinablesports.com. And let's jump into our first preview game. 